Ridgeline Minerals, we're a private company, like Gwen mentioned. We've been putting this together for about two years now. Um, so in a nutshell, we are a Nevada-focused junior. We're heading public in April of 2020. Um, we have an experienced management team, 25,000 acres of exploration portfolio in Nevada, and um, a very tight share structure that is set up for, I think, success if we have uh, some drilling success. So this is all underpinned by a strategic drilling contract that gives us a significant discount to drilling rates. So um, I'll get into that a little bit more detail after this. So since we are going public, this has taken all the fun. I'm a geologist. This has taken all the fun out of presentations for me. So um, <laughs> I will try to keep it within range here since we're on camera. Um, so one thing I wanted to point out, why Nevada? I don't think I have to get into any great detail. Everybody knows top-ranked jurisdiction worldwide. But I've been on a soapbox for a couple of years now saying that the future of Discovery is undercover. I was with Premier Gold Mines previously, had a great run with that team in Nevada, made the Discovery at Cove with our great team, 1.6 million ounces of, of high-grade 12 gram per ton gold, and Barrick ended up taking it over in 2017. Um, so I got to see firsthand what high-grade gold in Nevada, what kind of interest that can generate. Now, 1.6 million ounces is not a big deposit for a group like Barrick, but they came in anyways because the grade was there and there was room to grow. One thing I want to take away from uh, this point here, so Four Mile is now being touted as Barrick's next tier one asset. That is a 3,400 foot deep target in Nevada, right? Multi-million ounce, super high grade, but it is deep. So just keep that number in mind while you were going through the presentation here. The other thing I want to point out is that, uh, this is at the Denver Gold Show, by the way, um, Mr. Bristow said that there's, Nevada still holds an untapped wealth of geological endowment. So that again comes back to our belief that there's tremendous potential in Nevada, and we think we have some properties that can show that. Again, not going to get too promotional here, but again, Fraser Institute, Nevada, top-ranked jurisdiction worldwide. Mm -hmm. We have 25,000 acres of that, and we explore for Tier 1 deposits. Now, by saying that, I mean multi-million multi -million ounce, long-lived deposits is what we're going after. Um, we believe they'll command a premium valuation going into this new bull market. And going back to our drilling partnership, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we partnered with a drilling company very early on in the company. It's when we're, well, we're still private. But um, he took an equity position in the company. In return, we got a 60% discount to market rate for the first three years of the company or 50,000 feet of drilling, whichever comes first. Mm -hmm. So I think one thing I want to point out is that sometimes the difference between a great project and a discovery and just a great project that goes to zero can simply be the amount of drill holes that get in the ground. It is a numbers game to a certain extent. You need to back that up with good science. But the more feet you can get in the ground, the better chance you have of making a discovery. And we drill more feet than any of our peers. So uh, we are, uh, uh, as I mentioned, a private company heading public in 2020. Uh, we raised $3 million in 2019, seed round at, 19, at 12 cents, uh, second round at 22 cents, no warrants across the board. Haywood Securities has been a great backers of ours. They've been backing this right from the start. Uh, took the lead orders on both rounds. They'll be maintaining their percentage ownership as we head into an IPO. Uh, one thing I want to point out, uh, there is no cheap shares in this company. There's no 0.01 stock floating around. We had a 750 pre-money valuation back in May of last year. All of our founders were issued 12 cent shares based on that valuation. So I am firmly aligned with shareholders. Um, I am the largest individual shareholder and I've put 130,000 of my own money into the 12 cent and the 22 cent round as we move into this thing. So I, I fully intend on keeping that uh, ownership as we head through the IPO. As a whole, our management team owns 24%. EMX Royalty Corp has 9.9%. Ethos Gold Corp owns about 5% right now, and Vior Inc., which is a Montreal-based project generator, they own 9.9% as well. They will all be maintaining, uh, well, Vior and, and uh, EMX will be maintaining their interest going into the IPO. The other point is, is we have some really strong shareholders uh, backing us up. We have the Haywood team. We've been introduced to a lot of their network through that uh, relationship, and we've just been continuing to build on that. So we have a very strong group of shareholders, guys that are looking, they're not looking for a 20% bump on an IPO, right? They're looking for a big discovery, big win. Oh, by the way, sorry. Uh, just wanna point out, we currently have 28.9 million shares outstanding, 1.6 million in the bank. We are currently working on raising, oh, sorry, I'm a little out of order here. Uh, I'll mention just before we get going here, we're raising 1.5 million. We were targeting one to 1.5 here on our second tranche of our second round. So we, at 22 cents, no warrants. We're currently oversubscribed. And because I love working with Glenn so much, we decided to extend our financing an extra week and have kept an allocation for the resource maven group. So we will happily oversubscribe if the interest there. We are gonna be closing this thing rather quickly. 
uh, probably Monday of next week. So we got a good team, as Gwen, men Gwen mentioned. Uh, myself and Mike Harp, there we go, there's the laser. Mike and myself have had a long, uh, about eight, eight years each in Nevada now. Both got to work for great companies, Premier Gold, Gold Standard Ventures, and participate in large um, discoveries. I was the US exploration manager for Premier at the time when we found the uh, Cove deposits. So got a great chance to work with the Barrick team, understand what they're looking for. Uh, between Mike and I, we've been, a part of, we've been a part of 7 million ounces discovery over the last five years in Nevada. So Nevada's our backyard. This is what we're good at, and that's what we're focusing on now. So as I mentioned before there, got a little ahead of myself. Raising 1 to 1.5, as you mentioned, we're already oversubscribed, but we will happily oversubscribe er, additionally here if we have the interest to do it. We're going to use that for a 2020 IPO. We're going to do bump us up to about $5 million post IPO. That's going to cover two years of, of overhead and exploration. And we'll be putting $2.5 million in the ground this year, so roughly 18,000 feet. That's going to test all three projects. We have three great projects, each in their own right have their own kind of upside that we're excited to test on those. And, um, by the end of the year, we're going to have a pretty good idea of where we stand. So we have three projects, Carlin East, Swift, and Selena. Carlin East and Swift are very core land positions in the Cortez and Carlin trends, respectively. Swift, or the Selena project is down in an old Limousine Buttes district, very prominent uh, open pit, shallow oxide kind of little district, typically 500,000 to million ounce deposits. So it still can be very valuable, um, and it gives us a little bit of exposure to some oxide gold. So we're gonna start with Carlin East. It's a core land position. Whoops, wrong button. There we go. Uh, so uh, 33 square kilometer land position in the core of the North Carlin trend. So these are the kind of projects that we identified as, as highly high potential projects that have fallen out of the Newmont and Barrick uh, portfolio over the years and never gotten the exploration potential they deserve. So you look at this, we're sitting right across from the Gold Strike mine. This is 127 million ounces down through this trend. The only mine that's on this, this side of the basin is a 15 million ounce high grade underground Levo mine, which is roughly a 10 gram per ton head grade mine. So previously, Newmont had thought that this was a very deep target. We came in, we reinterpreted the geology. They thought it was gonna be 5,000 feet down. We came in in our first hole we drilled, it was actually 2,600 feet to target depth. So we hit three, almost 250 meters of anomalous alteration, up to a gram and a half gold across wide intercept, or silver, sorry, not gold. Um, but what that shows is we're, we're in the system, we need to keep vectoring in to that, uh, that target. So we'll be testing up in the crash zone area this year. This is a, where kind of everything is crashing together. We got very original with the name, um, <laughs> all of our faults. And uh, yeah, so we're very excited about this project. A lot of upside potential and obviously a very willing partner in Nevada Gold Mines if we have any level of success. Moving on to the SWIFT project, 49 square kilometer land package in the Cortez trend. This is quickly rivaling the, the Carlin trend in both endowment and size. Uh, most of the discoveries being made by Barrick over the last, let's say five to seven years, Gold Rush, Four Mile, those are all in the Cortez trend down here. Whoops, again, wrong button. Four Mile and Gold Rush right here. So you have over 75 million ounces along a very small, little tight land package here in the Cortez trend. We were able to pick up over 50 square kilometers, right on trend of that, of the pipeline mine. And uh, this thing has historic open pit, previously mined in the 1990s. And one thing to point out, these little deposits, these little guys, they tend to cluster around these big multi-million ounce deposits in Nevada. So you get little, little tiny deposits. They're just a sign of the deeper system kind of churning out all that gold. And then you get these big systems beneath them. And that's exactly what you see at Pipeline. Elder Creek, we have a little deposit at surface, no known discovery down at depth. Only two drill holes that actually tested that lower plate host horizon one of which ran 17 grams, of, or 17 meters, that would have been great, 17 grams, 17 meters of 0.7 grams per ton gold. So again, not economic, but again, showing you that you're in a gold system and we need to over 50 square kilometers vector in on where the high grade may be. Um, this was a previous Barrick deposit, or de Barrick project. Uh, they dropped it, again, we were able to pick this up, but a very, very affordable deal. All of our deals actually, by the way, we spun out of EMX royalty. So they took a 9.9% .9 equity position of our company when we started at a 750,000 valuation. That seemed like a pretty good deal to me to get 20,000 acres for a company that wasn't worth all that much. So we have no work commitments and 100% ownership has, will be um, covered by us raising 2.5 million and going public, which we will satisfy both in the next, uh, next uh, month and a half, so. Then we move on to the Selena project. This is uh, our shallow oxide opportunity down in the, in the Limousine Buttes district. 
It's again another large package, 25 square kilometers. Um, and there's historic, there's historic uh, channel sampling on this project across untested structural targets that are grading 22 meters of 0.7 grams per ton. Well, that's right in the average grade that's being mined in Nevada right now. Never had any drill holes in that target area. There's over two kilometers of strike to this target. We're gonna be doing some trenching across that earlier in the spring, follow that up with drilling shortly after the IPO. So the goal is, is to have news flow at all three projects starting in April all the way through October. We start with our oxide target, try to prove that we have some excitement going on on the oxide play while we're building the story at these two deeper targets. Collect a bit of additional data, come in, test our SWIFT project in June, July, August, get into the, uh, the Selena or the Carlinese project in late August into maybe early September. So the whole point is to test these things systematically. We don't get married to these projects. If it doesn't have merit, we're either gonna drop it, option it, or move on. So um, we have willing partners at all three projects. I think when you can say our two deep projects are right in Barrick's backyard, Newmont, Nevada Gold Mines. Uh, and then you look at the Selena project, McEwen Mining owns all of this ground to the north. Any kind of oxide discovery that we make, we have a very uh, potential opportunity to come in, do a joint venture, do a good deal, and let some of these bigger companies move it forward. So uh, just one thing I want to point out, out of that 2.5 million Canadian, 76% uh, of that this year is allocated, it's going in the ground. So again, like I said, we're focusing on getting the money in the ground, trying to make a discovery, add shareholder value. So we will be mobilizing a rig, as I mentioned, shortly after the IPO. 18,000 feet of drilling between Q2 and Q3 across all of our projects. And uh, we try to keep our burn rate incredibly low. I mean, our land and permitting costs at 13% to entice some of these bigger groups in to some of these plays, you need to have the land position to back it up. You make one discovery, Barrick wants to see that they can make three more along that same trend. So we've brought in large land packages. It hurts to pay the bill every year, but it's worthwhile to have exposure to that much ground. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, running out? Okay, I'm running out of time. You're going. Out. I'm out. <laughs> all right, everybody, you <laughs> bear can... it up. One, one last slide? Okay. <laughs> so again, all I want to point out, strategic drilling pan, strategic drilling partnerships. We have an experienced team, 25,000 acre portfolio, and we have a pending IPO. So thank you, everybody. I hope to catch with you later. Stay there, though. <laughs> yes, definitely. I am going to just ask each person a question or two after the presentation, just to follow up on a few things. Um, I guess I could have just let him keep talking, but <laughs> I like hearing my own voice. So um, let's talk. <laughs> uh, you certainly mentioned it um, a few times, but can we just re revisit the importance of the drilling contract here? Sure. Um, I don't know if you want to approach that from um, the cost of your planned drilling, what it would be without the contract, or the number of holes, what they, what they would be if you didn't have this contract. I mean, we're talking about deep targets. That's a lot of meterage. So this drilling contract to me is a pretty important part of this story. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. It is kind of, it's how we were able to raise the money, get the, you know, build these partnerships with guys, with groups like EMX. Um, so these projects, especially Carlin East and Swift, they didn't get drilled because it's too darn expensive, right? Over the years, even groups like Newmont wouldn't drill these projects because it's very expensive, risky drilling. Our drill contract, normally a hole at Carlin East, for example, might cost $250,000 to drill we can do that exact same hole for about $150,000. So any potential, not only are we minimizing the risk to the shareholder, but any potential success we have, we can pile that extra money into the second, the third, and the fourth. And there's a economies of scale to our program, right? The more we drill, the cheaper it gets for us by the foot. So, yeah. Yeah. Real, yeah. So that, I mean, there's a, there's a good number of companies out there that have ideas about deep targets in Nevada, but the, the ability to drill them without blowing up the bank is it's really essential. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's something that was kind of the first thing we looked at. Um, and this is, this is going to be a, a tough one to do in a minute and a half or something, but um, you, obviously you didn't get deep into geology in your presentation. It's very difficult to do that. Can you just dive into like one of the targets that you have at Carlin East or Swift and sort of just describe the layers of evidence that you have that get you excited about it, whether it's, you know, the structural trends, the, the structures in general, the geophysics, the drill holes that have happened. Can you just sure. take us through that a little? Yeah, we've kind of like our company tagline uh, is actually kind of exploration done differently, right? In reality, it's actually exploration done exact same as it has been done for a long time. Unfortunately, companies are not doing the full baseline work to develop these targets. There's a lot of pot shots being taken, wildcat holes, with not a lot of geology to back it up, right? People are trying to drive stock price, news flow, et cetera, and they're taking bad shots at deep targets. So we come in, we, we collect all the baseline data, the soils, the geophysics, we map it on the ground, and we layer all that data together so that we have a cohesive target. Um, only when you start seeing all of those layers 
layering on top of each other, the soils, the geophysics, that's when you know you start having a really interesting target, right? You can mm -hmm. drill geophysics highs all day long. Doesn't mean a darn thing <laughs> if you don't have the geology to back it up, right? So that's... Uh, and I think also you... Uh if people are interested in looking a bit more at the uh, at the targets. Yes, so we, uh, we're actually just rolling out a Verify platform on our website, so feel free to go to ridgelineminerals.com. Uh, we just have Carlin East up and rolling right now, but Swift will be coming shortly after. Um, this allows you guys to come in, take a look, see why we're excited about these projects, see where they are in relation to some of these biggest, some of the biggest mines in Nevada, and um, yeah, why we're excited about them, I guess, so. Perfect.